A few weeks ago, I made a video about all the ways that you're killing your passion for art, although often unknowingly. So this week's episode of YouTube Art School is going to be for you if you've been trying to get that art passion back. I've personally been doing art for over 30 years, very long time. And during that time, I've had many art slums that I've had to get myself out of. So hopefully the recipe that I've used to get my creative motivation back, time and time again can help you get it back too. Let's get this class started. All right, the first thing I recommend doing to revive your passion for art is also going to be the easiest. It's to do exactly what you're doing right now, watching me paint. Watch other artists do art. I'm sure you've watched many yourself, but a lot of artists will just kind of stop doing that, you know, when they lose their passion and getting back into it starts here. Find a bunch of time-lapse videos, find some artists streaming and maybe like scribble along or just do something else entirely, but do it while watching an artist doing art. And it's a good idea to watch a variety of artists, a mix of artists too, not just like crazy good ones. Find some videos from artists that you would consider like less good than you and watch that too. It feels good to realize that you're better at something and it's more likely to give you the motivation if you're reminded uh, that you got something that many others don't. So if you're looking to revive your passion for art, start here, watch other artists do their thing and obviously subscribe to the channel. Now, the next thing to help bring your passion back will be to look deep down and figure out why the heck you're doing art. To do anything, we have to first find a benefit for it or we won't act, right? We need a reason to spend calories. It could be anything really. Maybe you want to do art to help you relax, if that helps. Maybe you want to do art to be cool, you know, if you think artists are cool and you want to be cool too. Maybe to make money, to have an outlet possibly if you're an emotional person, just like writing in a journal helps some people. To get famous maybe, or as a competition against other artists that you don't want to lose to. Why do you truly want this and what are you prepared to do for it? Or rather, what was it, you know, when you still had the passion? If you're watching this, clearly you're trying to get it back. So try thinking back to that time that you were actively drawing, passionate about art. What was the drive? Often the reason isn't so obvious. It needs a bit of soul searching to find. In my case, for example, I started drawing out of boredom when I was younger since I couldn't play as much video games as I wanted. After doing that for a couple of weeks, months, my parents, teachers, classmates eventually started to notice that I was getting better at that. And you know, that positive affirmation gave me the boost to keep going initially. Once that wore off though, because it always does, it was the competitive side of art that kept me going. Seeing other classmates draw better than me was a huge motivation to get better. I just wanted to beat them, you know, not literally, obviously, but I wanted to not lose to them as artists. And that carried on while I got to discover more artists online as I got older, you know, just more amazing artists that I wanted to get better than. Now, of course, I love doing art for fun. I love creative things. But if I look deep down, you know, like the biggest motivator was that imaginary competition that I had going on in my mind. It's often when you find that true drive that you'll be able to revive your motivation like a doctor trying to get a diagnosis. Most of the time, the problem is you won't realize what the problem actually is, so you can't fix it. Figure out your reason to do art, the true reason. Then the next one will be to just start, like they say in business, just get started. For context, I'll just need to introduce something called the Zagarnik effect. It's the tendency that incomplete tasks have to occupy our mind far more than completed tasks. It's an interesting effect because it basically highlights how important it is to just get started at something. If you're planning a big drawing and you're thinking that it's going to be your best one yet, you know, it's going to be epic, bro, with a lot of characters, backgrounds and crazy effects. Stop right there. If the challenge is too great, the odds that you'll lose motivation along the way are sky high. So I always recommend to my students to reduce the scope of their projects, reduce it so much that it gets to something that you might be able to complete in just a couple of minutes only. I heard of this effect a long time ago, but the example was a little different. It was about flossing and it was something like this. Like don't ever plan to floss all your teeth. Always plan to only floss one tooth because our brain just has this real hard time dealing with incomplete tasks. As long as you get started, you'll usually just 
floss the rest of your teeth while you're at it. You know, you already got started, so might as well. The trick, though, is really to just commit to flossing one. And this trick works with flossing, but it also works for art just as well. Start with a quick study. Start with a quick one or two minute gesture drawing, maybe. That's what I do before starting any drawing. Um, do that and you're way more likely to keep drawing while you're at it. Once you're in it, you know, moving on to something more elaborate is just more motivating. The wall to get started suddenly isn't that high anymore. So just get started with something small. Now, if part of your motivation problem is that you don't really know what to study, you don't know how to get better, maybe I have the thing just for you. A complete art education program from home. I built it over many years with the goal to fully replace traditional art school programs at a fraction of the cost. The best part is you can get it on a mega sale until the end of the month only. Check the link to the program in the video description. Don't miss out while it's much cheaper and students on the program are what keep this channel going. So thanks for all of the support so far. Now, the next thing to revive your passion for art will be to try recreating the same parameters that were present when you first developed that passion. We just mentioned having an understanding of the true reason, you know, at the core of your art passion. That's an internal thing. This time I'm talking about everything external that contributes to your art passion. As an example, again, it might be different for you, of course, but I can't personally draw without listening to music. And as a result, I can often associate like certain artists or certain songs to previous works of art. Like, oh, I was listening to My Chemical Romance back when I was a young teenager. On repeat, when I was painting this, and that's a good positive memory, a good association. I really had a good time as I was working on that painting. So when I'm trying to get myself out of an art slump, I'll play those songs that I associate positively to periods of time where I was happily painting while listening to it. And that's often going to be a key element to get my passion to come back. It can be something other than music too. Maybe there's something that you like to watch when painting and you've come to associate it to art. Maybe there's something you snacked on during your best drawing sessions. But try to find all those things you remember being as positively associated with art when your passion was at its strongest and surround yourself with them. That's a big one for me. And then finally, the last thing to revive your passion for art is something that you can start doing right away. Something that's helped me be a lot more productive and motivated every day, not just about art. And it's simply to write a quick list of your daily goals every morning. It's really just one of those little life habits where the benefits actually completely outweigh the small amount of work that you gotta put in for this to work. Just write a quick list of your daily goals every morning just five to 10 things you want to accomplish that day. And writing it down acts as starting the task. Going back to the second tip that I mentioned, we're far more likely to get to it and complete it when it's written down. This is playing off of the Zygarnik effect that I just talked about a few minutes ago. It can be just a note on your phone or an actual whiteboard, you know, where you get to physically cross out the task once you complete it. This is something apparently very common amongst business CEOs who have a busy schedule and a lot of things to get done every day. And now that I do it too, it makes perfect sense. It takes at most two to three minutes every morning to write it down. Just do it for like a week at least and see the difference. It's made a huge difference in my life. And typically I'm pretty resistant to adopting new little habits like this in my life. I'm just too old for this stuff. But this one has made a huge difference. I'm so glad that I did it. So it can be just a couple of things that you're going to study, maybe an idea for a drawing that you want to do. Just make sure that it's nothing too elaborate. You know, plan simple things to give yourself the best chance at getting it done. Now, most of you won't do it because you're too lazy and you don't want to change really. But if you do, Seriously, give this a try. It really takes no effort. And let me know how it goes. And well, that's gonna wrap it up for this week's class. I hope that was helpful. If so, let me know in the comments. And let me know if you have any ideas for future videos that you really want to watch on the channel. I have a big list of things to do, but I'm always open to adding new ideas to the list, just like the idea for this video that was suggested by a bunch of you guys. So thank you for that. Now, I've been updating my free brush set quite a bit recently too, so make sure you go and grab that if you haven't already. The link is in the video description. It's got over 500,000 downloads so far. It's been quite popular. Man, I wish I charged $1 for each. Oh well, it's still free for now, so go get it if you don't have it yet. And if you skip the class where I go over all the things that contribute to killing your art passion. Well, make sure you give that a watch too next to avoid mistakenly doing it. All right, I'll see you next week. Make sure you got your notifications enabled to be on time for next week's class.